Dr. Fizz, Theoretical Physics, The Marvelous Equation of Paul Adrian Maurice Dirac, known as the Dirac Equation. Dirac is in search of a first-order differential equation for a candidate equation to describe the electron. So he takes the square root of the uh, energy term we had before, uh, E squared you know, equals this underneath this radical, so E would be the square root. And here the energy operator is no problem, it's the first root with respect to time, but what do you do with this thing? This is something with the, the Laplacian inside. How do you take the square root of the Laplacian plus something? How do you take the square root of a differential operator? This doesn't make any sense. But Dirac proceeds to do just that. He says the square root of this must be a linear combination of all the possible linear terms here. If you have a px squared, py squared, pz squared, and an m squared, you'll have something with px, py, pz, and the m. And here if you square this, you then have to get the other side, what's inside that radical. So if you square, if you square this right hand side, then you have to get what's inside here. So that means alpha 1 times alpha 1 to get the px squared term has to be 1. Alpha squared, alpha 1 squared has to be 1, alpha 2 squared has to be 1, alpha 3 squared has to be 1. So this would be, you know, a big mess here. You have your your uh, individual terms like px squared, py squared, pz squared, beta squared. Then you have all the possible cross terms when you do the algebra. Now these cross terms have to vanish. So something like px times py, there's no px py in there, so that means alpha 1 times alpha 2 has to be 0, which means one of those alphas have to be 0, but you just got done telling me that all those alphas have to be 1 to make the uh, px squared term, py squared term, pz squared term work, so this doesn't make sense. You can't do this. If you look at all the cross terms and set the condition that they have to vanish, then all the alphas are going to be 0, the beta is going to be 0, but you have to have all the alphas be one and the beta to be one. There's a contradiction. This does not work. So do you give up? Well, not so with Dirac. Dirac says, wait a minute here. When you multiply this out, when you look at that px, py term, you have a px, py coming from your alpha one with your alpha two, but you also have here a py and a px term coming from the alpha two hitting the alpha one. And here you have alpha 1, alpha 2, plus alpha 2, alpha 1, and you assumed they were equal. And row 2, alpha 1, alpha 2 equals 0, and of course then with regular algebra, alpha 1 or alpha 2 has to be 0. And Dirac says, but suppose these things are not your regular numbers, but there's something special, because we have to have this work. We have to have the alpha 1 squared equal 1, and we have to have each of these also equal the 1 when squared, and you have to have anti commutation being zero. Well, these are matrices. In other words, by taking the square root of a differential operator, Dirac gets matrices. That's going to make it work. So if we come down here to our conditions, this looks like a matrix uh, kind of equation. Anti-commutator with two operators is twice the identity and the chronic or delta here. And these anti-commute uh, all these anti-commute they're different but if they're the same see if alpha 1 alpha 2 if alpha 1 alpha 1 being the same alpha 2 alpha 2 being the same alpha 3 alpha 3 being the same then you have alpha 1 squared plus alpha 1 squared so you get two times the identity see so they anti-commute if they're different which gives you all the cross terms to vanish which is what you need and since each of these multiplied by itself will give you the identity you have everything that you want. So the uh, Pauli matrices have this kind of a relationship, but the problem is there's only three of them and we can't handle the beta. So what we do is we go to four by four matrices, which is elegant in itself because in special relativity you have x, y, z, and t, uh, four dimensions, and here we have four by fours. These will operate on column vectors that have four slots, four vectors. We call those four vectors or four spinners. You could say maybe four spinner. Uh, here uh, the trick is uh, since Pauli matrices were so neatly given this relationship and they start off with off diagonal components we put a Pauli matrix in the upper right slot. Uh, think of this as like four basic slots. Two by two, two by two, two by two. And you then have a zero two by two here and the Pauli matrix down here. You do this with all three of these and when you do that with all three you then use the uh, third Pauli matrix trick, a one and a one 
minus one, one minus one here diagonal, here with the double one and a double minus one, and hope that this will work. So this is inspired by the Pauli matrices that start off here with off diagonals, two off diagonals, and one diagonal at one minus one. So we put all three Pauli matrices as off diagonals, then giving us room to use the diagonal for the one, one, and minus one, minus one, and that works. I uh, here suggest that you work a few of these out and when you do that you get the Dirac equation all you have to do is replace your momentum vector with minus IH bar del and that's the Dirac equation where there's no potential energy and it's time independent.